What's going on, Red Sox fans? How you doing? Welcome to episode two of the Believe in Red Sox podcast. How you doing? Hello. I usually don't go live early or this early in the morning here on YouTube. Um, and it's kind of weird, you know? I'm usually going live at nighttime. Sometimes I'll go live during the day, but never really the morning time. But hey, late game last night. There was no way I was going to do a post game last night. So hey, why not spend my morning with all of you with a cup of Joe? Hope all of you have your coffee or whatever beverage you are drinking this morning. Um, but welcome to episode two of the Believe in Red Sox podcast. Hope everyone has had a great week. Hope everyone's ready for a good weekend. I know I am. Um, but let's get to it, everyone. Great series this past week with the Angels. And uh, you know, tough loss last night. But hey, winning three out of four, you can't... Uh, you can't hate that. You can't hate that. The Red Sox are playing some great baseball lately. Uh, but before I do get every th into everything, let's go over our sponsors for today's show. Um, our main sponsor, we have Bet Online. It's really easy to get started with Bet Online. Just head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up and use the promo code Believe B L E A V to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online continues to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments for the NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball, fights, and NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering needs, including live betting and the fan favorite Vegas Casino and poker games. We're also partnered with SeatGeek. Use my code HIDE. You get $20 off your first purchase. And we are also partnered with Prize Picks. Head on over, head on over to Prize Picks and you'll get a 100% deposit match if you use my code Ginger. So, everyone, let's get to it here. Uh, again, like I said, a great series overall for the Red Sox. Let's kind of just quickly, before we get into that series, go over the standings at the moment. Um, so, the Yankees, while the Red Sox have been playing some great baseball lately, the Yankees continue to play some great baseball as well. 41 and 16. I think the Yankees are actually the first team this year to get to the 40 win mark. It's a very good team over there in the Bronx. Tampa Bay uh, in second place at the moment, seven games back. They hold a wild card spot. The Blue Jays are right there with the Rays, 33 and 23, seven and a half back of the Yankees. So the Rays and the Blue Jays holding the first two wild card spots in the American League and the third wild card spot right now is in Boston's hands. The Red Sox winning seven out of their last eight. The win streak snapped last night, so they're going to be looking to start a new win streak this weekend. But the Red Sox holding on to the third wild card spot, moving ahead of LA in this past series. 30 and 28 for the Red Sox. It's just really nice to see the Red Sox above 500. It's just uh, it, it's a, it's a sight for sore eyes, I will say. But um, Let's get into it here. Let's get into this series. Uh, it was a four-game set. In game one, Red Sox winning it 1-0. Star of the show, Michael Walker, man. Are you kidding me? Michael Walker pitched out of his mind. He's been pitching out of his mind all year. He got the start here against Syndergaard. I mean, really, there's not a whole lot to talk about in this game besides Waka, because really the only offense was the Christian Vasquez base hit in the second inning. But that's all Waka was going to need. He had a complete game shutout in this game. He went all nine, only three hits allowed, a walk, and six strikeouts. There's some pretty fun stats behind this Waka complete game. It's the second complete game shutout of his career. The last time was in 2017 versus the Mets. The last time he actually went into the seventh inning was back on August 31st in 2019 versus the Reds. The last time he went into the eighth inning was June 3rd in 2018. So Waka, the last few years for him, he has not been able to pitch deep into games, but he went all nine here. Uh, Michael Waka, man, he has been a great story this year. Uh, the big thing with Waka, he has five pitches that he plays with. Fastball, changeup, sinker, cutter, and 
the curveball. But if we go take a look at his percentage, if you're with me live here on YouTube, you'll be able to see. But um, if you're listening elsewhere, whether that's Spotify, Stitcher, Google, or Apple, head on over to Baseball Savant. You can look at all these numbers. It's uh, pretty cool to see because they have a lot of visuals for you to look at. But um, taking a look here at the visuals, if you look here, he's actually throwing his sinker a lot more this year. If you take a look, the sinker last year in 2021, he was only throwing it 3% of the time, but this year it's all the way up to 14%. So he's utilizing that defense behind him, which that defense is actually shifting a lot more behind him this year than in prior years. Let me actually see. Here we go. If you go near the bottom of the page here, they'll show you the stat cast shift statistics in 2021. They shifted, his defense behind him shifted 26% of the time, but the Red Sox this year are shifting 42% of the time for him against right-handed hitters, and this year, they're shifting over 80% against lefties. Last year, it was only at 72%. So, the Red Sox are really working with Waka behind him, and like I said, he's using the sinker a lot more this year. He's getting more ground balls. So... For Waka, yes, he has been a great story, but I really think it's been a team effort. The Red Sox have really found a way to make it work with him. The defense is playing well behind him. He's using up his he's using his pitches much differently than he was last year, getting more ground balls. So I would say with Waka, while it is a great story, uh uh, hey, it's, it's been a team effort in my opinion, but it's working out completely. On Fangraphs, let me actually pull up on fan graphs here if you go to on every player's page on fan graphs there's a tab where you can go look at the value of each of their seasons if we go here on michael waka hold on one second fan graphs is not cooperating here we go uh so this year with michael waka he is worth so far six and a half million dollars he signed a one-year, $7 million deal. He's pretty much already worth that contract. And we're not even, we're, we're just over a third of the way through the season. So, Michael Waka, this is easily turning into one of the best bargains in all of baseball. So, let's hope the Red Sox can keep this up here. But, uh, really, there's not much else to talk about here. A one nothing win, Vasquez with the RBI in the second inning. And that was all she wrote. Syndergaard did pitch better in this game. I did say coming into this series that Syndergaard would bounce back. He had a tough start against the Yankees. But uh, the Red Sox, they were able to do just enough against him. Six hits off the Angels here. And the Angels, uh, after this game, this was when Joe Madden, uh, or the next day, Joe Madden got fired. And uh, man, oh man, that was a uh, very... It's crazy seeing these managers getting fired in season because you usually never see the managers getting fired during the season. Usually that's more of an offseason kind of a thing. And we've already had two now with Joe Girardi and Joe Madden. So could there be another one maybe? Hey, anyone see that whole thing with Tony LaRussa yesterday? <laughs> could Tony LaRussa maybe be near the end of his rope? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but let's move into game two. The Red Sox here getting another one, 6-5, the final. Uh, there's a lot of offense here in this game, a, a big back-and-forth game. It was Garrett Whitlock versus Jose Suarez in this game. Trout got it started with a two-run homer, but Boston answered in the second three in the bottom of the second. Arroyo had the ground out to score one. Dahlbeck had a base hit. Kike Hernandez had a base hit. We'll talk more about Kike Hernandez in just a little bit, um, but with the Red Sox, Going up here, uh, the Red, uh, the Angels were able to answer again with a fielder's choice that made it 3-3. Trout is just out of his mind like he always is, had a double after the home run. But the, the, the big thing there is while he was rounding first base, uh, he actually tweaked his groin. So he is day-to-day -day with a groin injury at the moment. Uh, Max Stassi with an RBI double in the third made it 4-3 for the Angels. Joe Adele had an RBI double in the fifth to make it 5-3, but the Red Sox chipped away at this point. Uh, RBI from Bobby Dahlback in the sixth. Trevor Story had an RBI in the seventh to tie the game, and uh, Christian Vasquez with the base hit. It went into extras, and Christian Vasquez had 
the game-winning RBI in the 10th. Strom ended up getting the save for the Red Sox in this game. But speaking of Strom, let's talk about that bullpen. Uh, Whitlock, let's start with Whitlock. Another underwhelming start here for Whitlock. Four innings, six hits, four earned, five Ks. You know, I've been on the record a lot this year, and I think a lot of Red Sox fans have been on the record that they think Garrett Whitlock should be in the bullpen. But there, it, there was something in this game where I think I might be easing off of that a little bit, and that is Tanner Houck. Tanner Houck was very good in this game. Uh, came out of the bullpen late, uh, two innings, struck out three. Now, with Garrett Whitlock, you got to understand here, this is a guy, he came out of the bullpen last year, a more simplified role for him last year. But with the Red Sox trying to you know get more innings out of him, it uh, it's going to take some time. You know, it, it, Whitlock really took to that role last year. And while, yes, we are sitting here and saying, man, we got to get Whitlock back in that bullpen, it, it's going to take it's going to take him some time to really get adjusted to being a starter. It's a completely different ball game, no pun intended, with being a reliever and a starter. So the fact that we have Hauk in the bullpen basically taking the role of what Whitlock did last year, I'm okay with giving Whitlock that time to try and figure things out. Because before, we didn't have that. We had Whitlock in the rotation. The bullpen was really fumbling a lot. So it, we were screaming from the mountaintops that we wanted Whitlock to be back in that bullpen. But now that Hauk has basically taken over that role, I feel a little bit better about it now. So I'm willing to kind of ease off there, give Whitlock some more time to try and figure things out in that rotation. Uh, but the bullpen in this game was just so good. Six innings total, only an earned run. Ten strikeouts from that bullpen overall. Diekman, Sawamora, Davis, and like I said, Tanner Hauk. Um but as for Tanner Houck, let's talk about him for a second. As a starter this year, he had a 4.32 ERA, seven strikeouts per nine, and almost four walks per nine. But since he has become a reliever, his ERA is down to a three. He's having, he got, or he has 10 or 10. I, can, I cannot talk this morning. He has two more strikeouts per nine than he was as a starter. As a reliever, he has nine strikeouts per nine. And the walks are down to 3.3 walks per nine. As a starter, it was 3.7. But as a reliever, it's 3.3. So we're seeing the walks coming down a little bit. I think Hauk is really going to take to this role very well. Uh, he's obviously showing that he is doing much better in this role. As a starter, it was kind of like how Whitlock was now, where you know, kind of just fought, trying to find your way through, trying to navigate your way through, you know, those first four or five innings. Whitlock is basically going through the same thing right now. Um, but I think Whitlock, he is showing better signs than Hauk was. Uh, you got to remember with Whitlock, you know, in his last start, he went into the sixth inning and he actually did pretty good. So, um, but a great win here for the Red Sox. It was a back and forth one. Ended up staying up pretty late for this one. I wanted to watch the whole thing. And, uh, but the Red Sox coming out with the win in game two. Let's go to game three, shall we? I mean, hey, is this basically almost a, a, a duplicate of game one? Another one nothing win for the Red Sox. Not a whole lot of offense, but uh, the difference here, Nathan Evaldi got the start, but uh, it was a team effort here. Evaldi and the bullpen pitching the shutout. Evaldi went five, six hits, five strikeouts. Evaldi was actually dealing with uh, a tight hip in this one. And uh, he should be okay for his next start, according to Alex Cora. But uh, Evaldi did look good here. Not his best, but he was able to find his way through those five innings. Um, and the bullpen, very good. Four innings. Danish, Diekman, Schreiber, Strom uh, finishing the job here. Strom with another save. Two saves for Strom in this series. So... Could that be the guy that's going to be getting the majority of the saves moving forward? We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, the only offense for the Red Sox in this game, Bobby Dahlbeck, RBI double in the sixth inning. Dahlbeck has actually been pretty solid his last 10 games. Over his last 10 games, he's hitting 286, a 344 on base, a 464 slugging, has a home run, six RBIs, a couple of doubles. And uh, Franchi Cordero has actually been cooling off recently. So could we be seeing more of Dahlbeck moving forward? He has been pretty solid over his last 10. Uh, but let's get into last night's game. 5-2 uh, loss. I did say coming into this series, I said the Angels. 
I, if I were to bet money, I would think the Angels were going to snap this horrible losing streak. It got to uh, 14 games overall, and uh, they found a way to win it. And the big reason for this one for the Angels was Otani. Otani once again just showing why he's just one of the best players on the planet, the modern day Babe Ruth. Uh, but Pavetta got the start in this one for the Red Sox last night, and he was looking really good. This is a pitcher's duel in the first four innings. These two guys were going back and forth with each other, and Pavetta definitely had the upper hand early on. Uh, he had a, 11 strikeouts through five innings overall. Pavetta has been just so good. That horrible April. Uh, it was, that was tough to watch, but ever since May 1st, he has 50 and a third innings, a 2.32 ERA, a 2.53 FIP, nine and a half strikeouts per nine, just under two walks per nine. He's only given up three home runs during that time. He's holding hitters to a 186 average and only a 236 on base. Nick Pavetta has just been so good for quite a bit now, I'm really excited for Pavetta moving forward. Uh, I remember when we got Pavetta from the Phillies, I remember everyone was like, oh man, Pavetta, this guy had an ERA in the fives with the Phillies. But the big thing with Pavetta and Heim Bloom, this is what Heim Bloom does. Heim Bloom finds these little deeper, these deeper analytics and he finds a way to get these pictures on track. Pavetta while he was struggling with the Phillies, he had one of the best curveballs in the game. He had good stuff, but the Phillies just didn't know. that They couldn't figure out a game plan for this guy. Heim Bloom, he is a very good game planner when it comes to pitchers. When he's, when you, he loves those deep analytics. He loves those advanced numbers. And he, they have really figured it out with Nick Pavetta. He's turning into one of the more solid pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. But Otani did get to Bavetta. Let's go over the scoring here. Uh, the Red Sox did get it started in the fifth. Cordero got the walk. JBJ moved him over with the base hit. A passed ball from Otani, and that was able to put a runner at third, and then Dahlback had a sack fly. That made it 1-0. Uh, this was the crucial part of the game for me. Otani, on the, ne um, he actually, on the next batter, he had a wild pitch. Jackie Bradley Jr. moved over to second, but then the Red Sox had two straight ground outs. And uh, that, to me, you saw a lot of momentum just go away at that point. I remember watching that. I'm like, oh, man, you know, that was looking like it was going to be a pretty decent inning for the Red Sox. They got the runner across. They still had another runner in scoring position. Otani wasn't looking very comfortable out there. That was the time for the Red Sox to take advantage and uh, – they just couldn't get it done. Otani really turned it on when he needed to. Um, and then the Angels answered in the bottom half of the fifth. And it was funny because I was on Twitter. I was loving what Pavetta was doing. And I actually tweeted out, Otani, he can't even hold Pavetta's jock strap, man. And then, of course, literally like 10 minutes after that, after I tweeted that, Otani just hit a bomb off of him. Like, are you kidding me? I'm never, tw I'm never tweeting again. I'm done because I'm just bringing bad luck to my Red Sox here. But Otani, just showing why he is the modern-day Babe Ruth. He's out of his mind. Pitched really well in this game. Otani's box score, uh, if we were to take a look here, he went seven innings, only gave up the four hits, gave up the earned run, like I mentioned earlier, the six strikeouts. He went two for four with a homer and two RBIs and a run scored. Um, at, coming into this series, I said this was going to be a tough one, because if you go back to Otani's start at Fenway Park, he was just so good, man. He was really good. Uh, this was a game, even though Pavetta was getting the start, seeing Otani with that he was going to be on the mound, I knew this was going to be a tough one for the Red Sox. And uh, Otani, man, just showing why he is that darn good. Um, the, more of the Angels' offense. It wasn't just Otani. Uh, Andrew Velasquez had the three-run homer in the sixth. That basically put the Red Sox away in this game. And... Uh, that was it. But overall, a great series for the Red Sox. Winning three out of four. They keep the momentum going. They're going into Seattle this weekend. And uh, I'm feeling really good about the, about the Red Sox right now. They just look like a completely different team from what they were in April and then, you know, in the early part of May as well. It just, it's a completely different looking team. They've just been on fire for what feels like a few weeks now. And uh, I'm excited about the Red Sox moving forward. However, it's going to be an interesting one 
with the Red Sox moving forward into this series with the Mariners. Now, the Mariners, they have been playing some very good baseball lately. They've been quietly playing some good baseball lately. If we take a look at the overall standings uh, right now, uh, the Mariners, they're still, you know, they're in the position that the Red Sox were in not too long ago where they're trying to find their way back to 500. The Mariners, as of right now, uh, still not looking great in the standings in the West. They're 26 and 31. They're 10 games back in the West, but only three and a half out in the wild card. But this Mariners team, they're playing a lot better as of late. Now, they are coming off of a series win against the Astros. They've actually won their last four series. So they're winning more ball games lately. And uh, this is not the same Mariners team from when they came into Fenway and we got the sweep with the Frankie Cordero walk-off grand slam. It's not the same Mariners team. They were really struggling at that time, but they have turned things around since then. So I'm, a, I'm not, you know... Very, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm not actually I'm not very excited about this series. You know, going into the Angels series, they were just losing games left and right. But this Mariners team, it's a completely different story. They're winning ball games. They're winning series. They're getting a bit of a, a mojo again, and uh, it's gonna be a tough series overall. Uh, it's a three game set. We got tonight. We got tomorrow night, Saturday night, and then Sunday at four o'clock Eastern time. Uh, but let's go over this Mariners team uh, real quick here. Hold on a second. Let me just pull up the Mariners. Here we go. So um, since May 27th, since they kind of started winning some series, they were getting back to some winning ways. Since May 27th, the offense ranks sixth overall. The starting pitching ranks ninth overall. And the bullpen ranks 12th in ERA. So overall, this team is just looking a lot better. Uh, Julio Rodriguez has been the star of the show for the Mariners as of late. Over his, Since that time, May 27th, he's hitting 283, a 389 on base, a 478 slugging. He has a 160 WRC+, plus, a couple of home runs, six RBIs. He's got four stolen bases as well. Julio Rodriguez, man, could he... Jeremy Pena has been the top rookie, at least according to Fangraph War, for this season. But Julio Rodriguez, he's starting to make some noise. And, uh, hey, I, I love me some Julio Rodriguez, man. I, I can't wait to see what his numbers are going to be at the end of the year. Um, but also, Ty France, Eugenio Suarez, they've been each hitting over 300 since May 27th. Those guys have been really solid. Logan Gilbert, he has a few starts since then. He has a 1.89 ERA. Chris Flexen, a 2.89 ERA since then. George Kirby has a couple of starts since the 27th of May, a 1.50 ERA. Everyone's just doing really well with this Mariners team across the board right now. So it's uh, it's going to be a really interesting series. The probable matchups here, let me pull up here the matchups uh, for game one. For game one, we're going to have Rich Hill versus Marco Gonzalez. And uh, that's not the right game. Hold on one second. Here we go. Rich Hill. Uh, it's going to be Marco Gonzalez. It doesn't say it here on MLB.com, but it should be Marco Gonzalez for tonight. Uh, Rich Hill, he looked really good his last time out against Oakland. So looking to see what he will do here in Seattle. And actually an interesting stat about Rich Hill. He is undefeated in Seattle. He's 4-0 and has a 2.38 career ERA there. So Rich Hill, I'm looking for a win tonight, buddy. Let's get it going. Um, for game two, it should be, and we just talked about Waka, man. I'm very excited about Waka, uh, but it should be Michael Waka versus George Kirby. And then in game three, it's looking like it's going to be Garrett Whitlock versus Robbie Ray. Oh, my God. Robbie, I, listen, Robbie Ray, man, great season last year. He's, uh, he's he's having his struggles this year. But Robbie Ray, he is a talented pitcher. But my goodness, the fact that I have to sit through a game and have to listen to Robbie Ray grunting the entire time. Robbie Ray is, I'm sorry, he's my least favorite pitcher to watch. The, the grunting, listen, some guys, yes, they, they, they got some grunts. I get it. But Robbie Ray is on another level, man. And uh, oh, I might you might have to mute this one, Red Sox fans. If you can't put up with it, you might have to mute this one. Um, but uh, Garrett Whitlock, it's going to be interesting for him. Not a great start 
uh, like I said, against the Angels. He was not very effective overall. So let's see if he can kind of find his way here on the road against the Mariners. And then Michael Waka, of course, coming off of the complete game shutout. Uh, he's going to have a tough matchup against George Kirby, one of the, the better young pitchers in the game. And, uh, hey, George Kirby, man, he's looking really good. And, uh, hey, Rick Hill, pretty excited about that. That's a pretty cool stat, honestly, that I found there with Rick Hill, undefeated in Seattle. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but let's get to some injury news. Let's get to some injury news here uh, with the Red Sox. Uh, I did mention Evaldi was dealing with some hip tightness earlier in his last start, uh, but he should be okay for his next start. Um, actually, Kike Hernandez was just moved to the IL. He actually, speaking of hips, I feel like we're seeing a lot of hip problems lately. What's going on with these hips? But uh, Kike Hernandez actually has a right hip flexor strain. He's going to be on the IL. The earliest that he can return uh, will be June 18th. So it's going to be a little bit before we see Kike. Um, Hansa Robles, he was on the IL there for a little bit with some back problems, but he's back in the bullpen. He's been activated. Uh, Matt Barnes continues to work through a shoulder problem. Matt Barnes, please figure it out before you come back um so matt barnes the earliest he can return is june 15th and uh actually we got some chris sale news uh he has been he's been dealing with just feels like stuff forever now but uh chris sale threw a bullpen a couple of days ago and uh everything went well according to that he's going to throw one more bullpen session later this week if that goes well he's going to go up against some live hitters in some batting practice and if that goes well should be pretty close to a minor league rehab assignment um and actually there is a little bit here on chris sale um as of this morning uh there was a tweet out from chad jennings um from and uh he said it was from who was it from here uh, she said it was, he said it was from Jen McCaffrey. Uh, the Red Sox are willing to consider Chris Sale in a bullpen role, at least initially, if it gets him to the big leagues more quickly and the rest of the pitching staff can absorb the workload. Hey, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, why not just have Chris Sale as your closer, man? Let, why not? Let's just have Chris Sale as the closer. If, if they want to get him back sooner rather than later, that guy would be nasty as a closer. Are you kidding me? I mean, let's actually pull up here some Chris Sale stats. He, I remember way back in the day with the White Sox, he was actually a reliever in the beginning. He had his first two seasons, he was a reliever full time. And uh, my goodness, back in 2010, he was a really good reliever that year over 21 games. He had a 1.93 ERA over the 21 games. In 2011, he pitched 58 games out of the bullpen, a 2.79 ERA. He, he was getting a good amount of strikeouts there out of that bullpen. Honestly, why not? Why not have Chris Sale come out of that game? That's an electric arm at the end of the game. You know, he's a tough he's a tough at bat all the time, and you're coming in for a few outs in the ninth inning. Why not have Chris Sale come out here for the ninth inning? I would I would love to see Chris Sale as the closer, even if it was just for a little bit. Um I would love that, man. Oh, David Knight in the chat. I saw Chris Sale in high A out of the bullpen when he was first drafted. The guy's just got the wackadoodle kind of delivery there. And uh Man, I mean, we, hey, we all saw him close out the World Series in 2018. He can definitely close out some games. And uh, I would be pretty excited about that, to be completely honest. Um, we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening there. Um, but uh, also, we do have a little bit of news on James Paxton coming off of Tommy John surgery. Uh, he has been throwing off the mound lately, and he is going to throw another bullpen today, actually. So he could be pretty close to getting on a rehab assignment. I'm thinking we're going to see James Paxton probably after the All-Star break. I'm telling you right now, the Red Sox, they've been able to figure this out lately. They were having some struggles there in the early part of the season, but my goodness, they've been playing some great baseball lately, and they're going to get some guys coming back from injuries. Maybe you can go make a move at the deadline. I'm just saying, maybe this Red Sox team... They're, they're going to be pretty well set for the rest of the way forward. Now, I'm not saying James Paxton is going to be amazing coming back. I'm sure he's going to have to work through some rust, you know, the first 
at least the first couple of starts, first few starts, but that's just going to be some more depth for the rotation. You can move some guys to the bullpen. You know, I'm really excited about how the Red Sox are looking, playing great baseball. You got guys coming back. Um, and also Josh Taylor here, He's actually been out for the whole year. He's right now, he's still working with a lower back problem, but uh, he is throwing lately and uh, his next bullpen session is scheduled for today. If that goes well, he's going to go up against some live hitters in batting practice. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited. Jason, man, what a great comment here in the chat. Chris Sale closing with Tanner Houck as the setup sliders everywhere. Are you kidding me? I would love that. Absolutely love that. Tanner Houck coming out for the eighth inning. Slider, slider, slider. Just completely unhittable. Chris Sale coming in from the left side in the ninth inning. Oh, what a dynamic duo that would be at the back end of the bullpen. I mean, hey, whatever. If Chris, uh, why not just put Sale as the closer, man, for the rest of the year? Why not? I mean, I would love to see him as a starter if they end up going that route eventually. I think that'd be great. Um, but dude, that would be electric at the back end, man. Electric. How can, and Sale in the eighth and the ninth? Oh, give me a break. Um, but that's it for the injury news. Let's go over some minor league news. Uh, we actually have here Connor Siebold. Connor Siebold, he returned from the IL. He had a pec strain recently. He was out for a few weeks. Did pitch last night for the Woo Sox. Not a lot. He pitched three scoreless innings. They're going to kind of work him back up there. Uh, but he did look okay in those three innings. But he has been pretty good in the minor leagues this year. This is another guy could this be a late season call up for the Red Sox? He's 3 and 1 with a 2.27 ERA over 8 starts in the minors this year. So, Connor Seabold, good to see him back. Uh Marcelo Mayer. Oh my goodness. Marcelo Mayer, he was actually dealing with a bit of a wrist issue lately, but uh last night he went 2 for 5, had a home run, had a double. Overall in the minor leagues this year, he's hitting 311, 3 homers, 21 RBIs, has a 9.10 OPS, Marcelo Mayer, man. My goodness. He's 19 years old. He is looking phenomenal so far with single A Salem. And also, I want to actually uh, pull up here. We have Nico Cavadas. Nico Cavadas, man. He was also drafted last year along with Marcelo Mayer. He's got some pretty solid numbers down here in single A. The batting average, you know, a little on the lower side, hitting 260, but you know, not bad by any means. But I want to point out here the on-base percentage. He has a 425 on-base percentage in single A right now. He's got seven homers, 29 RBIs. He's got a 925 OPS. Man, oh man, Nico Cavadas, man. He's been really solid so far. He's getting on base like crazy. He had a double last night. He had three walks. Man, oh man. Um, also, I want to point out Brandon Walter had a rough debut in double A. He got roughed up. I think he only went a couple of innings. He gave up six runs, uh, but he was a lot better his last time out. Uh, he went six innings, only gave up a run, five Ks in his second start in or uh, in triple A. Sorry, in triple A. He in his first start in triple A, he got roughed up, and uh, second start was a lot better. Also, Winkowski, he came up recently for the Red Sox, had a spot start, and uh, he looked pretty good. They had a double header. Walter got one of the games, and then Winkowski got the other. Winkowski looked great, man. He went seven innings. He struck out six. Man, oh man. So, it's good to see the Red Sox getting some good pitching in the minor leagues. I feel like we have not had a lot of good pitching in the minor leagues as of late uh, in the last few years, but we're seeing some guys really pitching well, man. Winkowski, Walter has emerged. You got Brian Bayo, who I believe is getting the start tonight. If it's not tonight, it will be tomorrow night. Um, but he's been looking really good in the minor leagues this year, uh, being their top pitching prospect. You know, my goodness, you know, Connor Seabold, he's been pretty solid. Yeah, he just came back from an injury, but he's had a pretty solid year overall in the minors. And uh, also just want to point out, uh, Miguel Blyce, highest prospect in rookie ball right now. They just started up rookie ball with the Red Sox. And uh, Miguel Blyce in his first game had a double. So pretty excited to see where Miguel Blyce will be over the next few years. He's an exciting one. So keep an eye out for him. Um, but everyone, that is all I have on this fine Friday morning. Um, I want to thank you for coming out for episode two 
of the Believe in Red Sox podcast. Uh, before I do get out of here, just want to go over our sponsors one more time. Don't forget, our sponsor for this episode is Bet Online. So go check it out if you're looking to throw down some cash. Don't forget, we have SeatGeek. Use my code HIDE. You get $20 off your first purchase. Oh, and also for uh, Bet Online, the code for Bet Online to get 50% off is Believe. B L E A V. And also, we are partners with Prize Picks. Use my code GINGER. You get a 100% deposit match. Everyone, that is all I have. A great series against the Angels. It's going to be, I'm going to be honest with you, I think it's, I don't think it's a, sh- a for sure thing that the Red Sox win this series with the Mariners. They've been playing some great baseball, but this will be a fun series to watch. Both teams are playing great baseball lately. The Mariners, they're desperate right now, man. They're trying to win as many games as they can right now because they got to get back in those standings. So, um, but I'll be looking forward to it. I'll be live again for episode three of the Believe in Red Sox podcast. Um, that will most likely either be Sunday night or Monday morning. Haven't quite decided, but around that time frame, I usually like to do an episode after a series has concluded, so that way we can go over the series and then we can preview the upcoming series. So, um, everyone, have yourself a great weekend. Go out there, go have some fun, and uh, hey, go eat some food, go make yourself a good sandwich or something. I don't know. Do whatever the heck you want to do. Um, But everyone, thank you for coming out for episode two of the Believe in Red Sox podcast. And uh, 